decided to go with the casting I did the other day, the second one. There's a little bit of shrinkage on it, but it won't affect it in any way. I will cast it again and get it right, because one or two people have asked about being supplied with castings, and obviously I can't supply castings unless I, unless I rip my standards. Now all I've done with this casting, I've de-ragged it, and I've cleaned up a bit on the wire brush. I've put it in my vase and I've set the base level. When we date with me eight gears, I've set the four corners, it's within five or six thousand. Another measure. We set the fly cut up in the centre of the job, make sure we've got enough sweep to cut up with a stage which we we'll have. Got my quill locked off. Just touch in there, lock my table off, my axis is locked off. So I've got it sitting to a side, so it's obviously really looking flat. See, all I want is enough off to make this flat no more. So put on. Power feed. I think that's why that ball fly put us with the bastard stuff flies everywhere. Like I say the, the centre is not that, not that critical 10 20 thou way that way. I've got a reasonable finish on there now, it's nice and clean. I'll take another, take another 10 thou cut of it and uh, that'll do. See what it's like, go and do it, not with that spinning around. I would pull your hand off that bastard. Doesn't know what it's cutting, so it's cut flesh and bone just the same as it cuts the aluminium. Make it get such a good finish, of course. fly cutter in ink so you can see what I use for a fly cutter. Anyway, that's a cutter, it's basically it's a left hand left hand knife tool off a lathe, tip tool. And it's in a it was actually a bolt holder modified and it just, just held an aureate collet. Puts a good finish on. And you get a finish I got on steel as well with it. You obviously gotta run the, the cutter a lot slower. That's reasonable. I need to find the centre of the casting, which is quite easy because it's a parting line, that'll be the centre. So what I'll do, I'll use my wiggler. This is a standard one I got it given, I've got a, a cheaper one, but this is a this is a nice one. Simply go in the drill chuck and a little nip on there. You set another machine away. A bit of temptation is to use your hand to stop that from moving around. Don't do it, it hurts. 
do some of metal. Run a bit faster. And open up the gear. pins in here they fit in the t-slot and the cross slide the cross slide three of t-slots I've got some six mil cap heads here the heads are just slightly too big so the machine the heads don't be a good fit in there and I'll just drill the top two holes the little screw in and you can use it to line up on the to line it up square with the lathe and you can also take them out so this can be bolted onto a face plate or used on the miller machine so what we need to do now is drill on top of a couple of holes six mil Tap and drill for six mil is five. No one is just touching. Zero as that axis. machine tops and screw them straight in. What I do I nip it up in the chuck. A bit of cutting over again, do with the 40. I set it away and just as the motor slows down I drop it in the wall like that. Top wrench I made at school, probably, I know probably 40 odd years ago. I've still got it. I'm going to put a nice counter sink in there. That's for thread, 6x1. It's a nice deep counter sink.
about what four wheels in, machine that face and machine that face, so we've got two nice square registers. I run again uh, Klein milling, conventional milling, I'm going to conventional mill this one. I'll zoom in a bit so you can, you can see. Cutter's going to be going that way clockwise. I'm going to advance the table into it that way. Cutter going clockwise, table in that way, it's going into the direction of cut. That's conventional milling. Same colour to put the slots in. I'll lock the table off. Stop the chopping. We'll take about a quarter inch cut. Zero by counter. One start, that's four to do. It's just touching there. Nice aluminium, this it's machine quite nice, there's no, no porous bits or blow holes in it. Shiny where it's cutting the threads. I don't like to see shiny threads. 
bastard. See, I made that. I made that tap wrench at school when I was 14 or 15. It's 40 odd year ago, and I still got it. I don't think there's very many kids of 14 year old now make tap wrenches at school. Which is a great shame, really. That's where it's going to be going. And there we'll see what we'll leave centre height. Absolutely spot on. If it was a big lathe, you could put a packing piece in or like a knife fat lathe. I've left enough metal on so you could take a quarter inch off there. Very pleased. We'll make the dowels for in there now. Keep it lined up that way. 